Dear students, in this module, we are going to talk about the government initiatives and a way forward to curb the menace of poverty in Pakistan. So, poverty reduction in the country is in progress. We see many programs that have historically been launched in order to reduce the poverty. Some of them uh, were aimed at specific geographic areas. The others focused on the particular populations in the country, whereas uh, uh, poverty reduction policies at national level endeavor to address the poverty as a whole for the, uh, for the general welfare of public. The government of Pakistan has taken some successful initiatives to reduce poverty in Pakistan. Yet these initiatives lack the potential to eliminate the poverty. Uh, multiple factors were contributive to that. So there is a need of holistic solution for, uh, for curbing this menace. Uh, let's first talk about the government's efforts to reduce poverty. One of them was the decentralization plan of 2003. It is essential governance reform where a devolution plan or decentralization of government uh, produced uh, rather empowered the provinces and local governments to, um, to consume their funds that they generate from their public so that it um, uh, the economic fruits should be trickled down uh, it tends to replace the existing power structure and control to the people it enacted a three tier local government plan and then they had the establishment of khushali bank in 2000 the main aim of this bank was to support uh, by giving uh, by giving money to the poor by making them economically active to start their business plans as you can see this is the emblem of uh, a Khushali microfinance bank and then Pakistan Poverty Alleviation Fund in 1997 was another good effort another positive effort it aimed to help the poor people uh, by offering them loans uh, for their small businesses. It now works to increase the access of poor and micro enterprises to the credit facilities. And Zakat and Usher department uh, was created in 1980. Uh, it, was an, uh, it was to follow the Islamic tradition of Zakat. It tended to take uh, zakat from the rich and to distribute them uh, that money among the poor uh, as we know that from uh, Islamic jurisprudence or from uh, a religious point of view 2.5% of zakat was imposed on the wealth of the richer people which was to be distributed among the poor and Pakistan Baitul Mal uh, initiative of 1992 was established to work for the poverty alleviation specifically and it focused on the widow, orphans, disabled and needy and the poor people. So its aim is to provide the educational assistance to those who cannot afford residential accommodation uh, to the homeless people, a free medical treatment to those who cannot afford self-employment schemes uh, for the micro uh, entrepreneurs and it is funded by the federal government here is the emblem of pakistan Baitul mal and if we talk about the poverty alleviation as a whole we need to uh, look at it uh, from a very systematic point of view uh, like ensuring the resources for the poor uh, uh, although a lot of initiatives and efforts have been made and many of the promises were committed uh, yet most of them 
appear to be the false promises. So if we really wanna uh, ensure the resources for the poor, we need to generate uh, a very systematic approach with which we can identify the real uh, people who are the deserving people and then we can ensure it on the micro level instead of merely focusing a general or maybe uh, a very uh, specific approach that has been done through the non-governmental organizations. So at the national level, a complete plan is required to address the poverty. And empowerment of the poor is also important because poverty needs to be uh, eliminated through the poor people themselves. It should not be uh, merely addressed by those people who can afford and who can produce the policies by sitting in the comforts of their uh, drawing rooms. Uh, it needs to be uh, approached through the real people, those who have already face the poverty they should also be engaged in the planning and equal access to the market should also be ensured uh, it should not be based on uh, the market access should not be based on those who can afford and those who are in the powerful positions rather market should be open and available whoever wants to do business no matter if he is a uh, he can invest a large amount of money or he can invest a very little amount of money. And increasing the agriculture productivity should also be focused because uh, we are currently facing acute food shortage. So we need to develop the mechanism to make our lands more fertile and more productive for the agricultural activities. And development of infrastructure is also uh, much needed because the poor people find uh, are living on the streets which is producing further dangers for them so we need to produce more infrastructures we need to produce better housing and we need to produce uh, smart cities rather than the conventional styles of living and the provision of microfinancing should also be ensured uh, with the uh, easily accessible uh, opportunities of financing then the provision of healthcare facilities should also be ensured even for the poor even for those who cannot afford and economic growth should be focused more because uh, we have a very uh, little share of exports in our total GNP uh, which should be the cause of concern. We need to adopt more policies so that our commodities should become the part of international market. The provision of better education facilities for the poor people needs to be ensured. We need to curb the bifurcated education system where the richer people have a far more advantage as compared to those who cannot afford. The population control, as we have talked earlier, and needs to be addressed because the population can equally become resource as well as a burden if it is not addressed adequately.